Okay, so here's a demonstration of marker sketching for costume gesture drawing. So here's an approach of using markers. Uh, my initial lay-in is done with a Jelly Roll pen, which is an amazing pen that actually is waterproof. So um, it's such a benefit if you're, you're using markers, you know, whether you're out sketching, um, you know, on location or at lunch or something of that sort, or figure drawing anything. Uh, this allows you to go back over the top of it with marker, you know, uh, watercolor, even paints, you know, acrylic, or that sort of thing. Um, so you can see here, not only is it just about markers, but I'm starting to punch up um, the values with another brush pen, and this is the Pentel uh, water brush, which allows you to um, get, you know, a, a decent line weight that's different than the initial pen, but also um, dry brush. So here, as you can see, as I start to lay in marker, I'm really trying to focus on clean shapes. Uh, I've done this with the um, the pen sketch in order to keep clarify things, but you'll see I start to lay it in as overall shapes. The hair, now I have the hat. Also his shirt, I'll use the same marker value um, it's just so it links together and it makes a cohesive um, sketch. And here, as I start to lay in the marker on his face. I usually use two markers for the most part when it comes to skin, although skin is all completely different for each culture, or each lighting set. So I use buff and putty are two colors that are Prismacolor. Um, so as you saw, what I do is I'll lay in the initial um, down planes, right, which will be the, the, the uh, part of his skull, that sort of thing that goes down his eyebrows, his lips, his chin, that pushes down. Uh, here I'm starting to add grays, cool colors, uh, in to give it a little bit more depth and drop shadows. You'll see in a couple of sketches um, later, this, this process is repeated, so there'll be time to actually uh, take a look. Here I'm, I'm using this uh, orange, which is a complementary color to blue, in order to silhouette the overall shape and character the same way I would with, um, you know, the overall shape of his head. I'm just clarifying and showing you that more clearly um, based on the outside box. Um, again, this is a cool gray, probably a 50. It allows me to go in and actually um, add value differences that force you to look at the eye. And because of that, I can bring in that white pencil, which is a Prismacolor pencil, to give you extra highlights to force you to that area, which is his, um, his eye. This is a Prismacolor red. It could be scarlet red or any red. Um, it allows you to show where blood exists in the system and add more life to a sketch. Okay. So now I'm clarifying. So you go back and forth, you see. It's not like a procedural thing where you would draw, do the marker, use the white, move on. You, you, you can uh, combine different things in different ways. So here's a, another sketch. Uh, it's more for, full body, so you can sort of see the process. You know, for the sake of time, I just want to make sure that um, all these sketches, I believe there will be three of them that link up so you can see that it's the same character, the same person in the same costume. You know, as a visual development artist, you're asked to pull together um, a lot of sketches of the same person, and this allows you to show that they all work together through color linking, which is a chapter uh, in my book, The Art and Feel of Making It Real. So here we go, I'm clarifying more shapes, um, coming in, making sure that uh, each one of these elements that I do add is more of a, you know, costume is something that allows you to tell who the person is a lot of times. You could do the opposite where, you know, someone is wearing a costume that doesn't fit them to show them that they're out of place with this situation. But in this case, it, you know, it's about a, sort of a, a Scottish Highlander. Right, so these are why I chose these distinct colors for the hair. Even the oranges are something that's um, more fitting of people in this um, culture or area. So here you can see as I add the marker, I'm doing it in solid shapes, but I'm allowing white, I'm leaving little gaps so you have a chance to see what one, one item is in front of the other, but it also gives you a chance to uh, relax so they don't all bleed together. So again, flatting in the shape, but also thinking about 
you know, as a 2D shape, but also three-dimensionally how these things work. Um, bring in some darks again to add more value to the green area on the sheath of the sword. And, you know, continue to clarify. So here's more of a um, cool gray that allows drop shadows, but also um, another dimensional element. Come back in with a red, a darker red, just to poke up certain areas. And just like I would with marker, and you saw in the other sketch, um, I would add a um, this darker pen, which as you will see, you can also clarify contrast with drop shadows, but also um, it allows you to give line thickness, that one object is in front of the other. Right, so that arm is in front of the body. So I, you know, you make things a little darker on the other side. Continue to clarify. Contrast the um, blue with some gold or orange color. Adding drop shadows. 